Hello, you fool, I love you. Come on, join the joyride. That's not exactly what I meant to say, but, uh, rafication. Rafication. I don't know what reification. I don't know what that means. Uh, so we're here doing the, uh, I think it's a 3-1-1 into 5-1-1 with two bases, 52 workers at 10 minutes. Um, is the goal, and $3,500 army at 10 minutes is the goal, 117 unit space at 10 minutes is the goal. It's a 10 minute attack, you're making one bunker and eight marines, and then getting a bunch of add-ons. I feel like this should be two bunkers, um, because why not? You scouted cannons. The second you, okay, first of all, the, the filter video says don't scout, so you just totally failed at that first part. You scouted, you lose. Just kidding. Uh, I'm not kidding, I'm serious. I'm not saying you shouldn't scout, but I am saying that the build says not to scout, so, you know, you've totally violated the build. Okay. I hope you're I hope you're proud of yourself, buddy. You've got so much mule energy. In the very early game, you always want to drop a mule the second you can. Having a hundred mule energy, that's six hundred bucks you don't have right now, almost. Uh so here we go. Second is down, you're dropping mules at it, you've got three bases I mean three raxes, you're getting the add-ons, you're starting you you've got stim. Again, you you got stim again. I don't know if if you should be getting combat shields instead. I don't know. This time you did it right. You got the reactor core and the starport the second you finished this factory. That's great. You got the third geyser, but last time you didn't put guys on it, and this time you also didn't put guys on it. You are keeping up on supply depots, that's good, but you really probably want more. I don't know if you're going to supply block here. Yep, you're going to supply block. Oh, maybe you're not. We'll see. Lifting this, putting this down, getting two medevacs with your only 200 gas. Come on, two medevacs. 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 Okay, you're not making medevacs right now. Now you're only making one. What is it that you thought you needed your gas for? I don't know. Make the man of X, man. Make them. Make them. But you're doing much better this time than, than you did last time. Your money is almost zero. You're doing the build very well. Uh, but I'm still a little worried. Let's look at 10 minutes. First of all, this is a 10 minute push. You're pushing a little bit late and you're going to run into Colossus when you push late like that. Uh, so you were supposed to have queued up two medevacs. You're supposed to have been mining gas on this third a little bit longer. You're supposed to have 52 workers, you only have 46. So the whole thing just didn't really come together. Because it looked like you were doing so well because you're keeping your money low, but if you don't get the workers you need and you don't spread them out, you're not going to have the income you want. Um, and you drop mules a little bit late in the beginning and you're dropping them late again now. So it's it's subtle it's subtle the problems in this th in this in this version of the build but you can you can clearly see them if you watch your own replay stop it at 10 minutes and say 88 supply that's not 117 if you say 2250 2, plus one bunker plus stim plus combat shield so this is 5 6 uh, so this is 2800 it should be 35 so you're 7 700 bucks short on army you're 20 supply short and your uh, six workers short and so that's bad man it's bad also if we check your mining efficiency I feel like you're oversaturated here and undersaturated here uh, and you can do that with a calculator a cow locator it locates cows for us let's find us some cows so you take your income 1620 plus 384 and you subtract 160 for each living mule, minus 160. I think you only have two mules. Yes, you only have two mules. And then you divide that by, do you divide it? Yeah, divide it by 40. And you say, you have a 42 worker mining efficiency. And because you have 46 workers, you wonder why this is short by two, uh, this is short by four. And we can see that two of them are idle right now, and that's fine, I mean, you're always gonna have like two idle workers to make depots. But you're missing another two, and the reason that you're missing another two is because not all of these guys are actually mining. Uh, about 18 of them are actually mining, and then the other four are half mining. So you end up with another two idle workers. So it's really, you know, very minor, minor stuff. Not stuff to be worried about. But if you want to know why you missed the benchmark, that's why. This is why you missed the benchmark. Um, so the other thing is that it's really important when you attack because this is 
a 10 minute timing push. If you don't push a 10 minutes, what was the point? Um, so really push out, push out with your first two medevacs and build those first two medevacs earlier than you did. Come on, second medevac, come on, baby. You can do it, you can do it. So if we look at what the, what the Protoss had at 10 minutes, there's a reason that this is a 10 minute timing push. And the reason is that at 10 minutes, people will tend not to have what they're working towards. Um, so he didn't even have his warp gates turned into warp gates yet. He didn't have any, almost any army. So he has two cannons and a $1,200 army. If you push now with a $3,500 push, he dies instantly. No possible chance for him to survive. But instead you're going to take a little bit longer and you're going to push a little bit later and we're going to see what he has by the time you actually show up. Uh, he is working on Colossus. It's not surprising. You should expect, okay, a uh, Colossus first build gets their first Colossus at 8 minutes. A standard Colossus build gets their first Colossus at 10 and a half minutes. And everybody, everybody, even if they hadn't planned to make Colossus, everybody has a Colossus by 12 minutes. So you really, that's the reason you push at 10, is so that unless you went Colossus first, you're going to catch him with no Colossus and kick his butt. So this is great. You have this huge army and it's ripping him to shreds. And he has a pretty small army of his own. And he he already had finished Colossus, he already finished Charge, he already finished... It looks like he didn't get... Yeah. So if you'd pushed to 10 minutes instead of right now, you would have hit him before he had Charge and before he had Colossus, and you'd have ripped him to shreds. But now he has Charge and he has Colossus, and it's going to go a little bit worse. Although you should still win this battle heavily. Um, he's surrounding you with this stuff. So you do win that battle by a lot, um, but you don't like win the game. So you killed 29 workers and you did a thousand dollars more damage than he did, and so that's good. That was a victorious fight. It would have gone much better if you hadn't screwed up the build. It would have gone much better if you'd pushed at the appropriate time, but it went really well, and you should be proud of that. Uh, this is too many workers. Too many workers. You you gotta cut workers at 52. Um, the build that you went, the, the 511, it's a 52 worker two base push. It's it's not meant to have more than 52 workers. So at this point you have 62, that's 10 workers that are just kind of not doing anything. In general, if you want to make a three base uh, uh, play, like I like to do, or uh, and I like to tell other people to do, then it's fine to have up to 72 workers. But the the goal here was it was a two base push, so you made too many workers for this build. This isn't too many workers for the universe. This is just too many workers for this build. This is not going to go well because he's got two colossus and a ton of charge lots, and there's no possible way to beat two colossus and a ton of charge lots with a tiny smattering of marines, marauders, and tanks. You need banshees, lots of banshees, to force stalkers because stalkers are terrible. Um, It'd be nice to have siege mode, it'd be nice to have vikings, but there's no way to use infantry and medevacs to kill charge lots and colossus. That's just not going to happen. So you came out a, a thousand ahead on the first fight, but not surprisingly you're going to come out way behind on this fight. You lose a thousand dollars of troops and kill basically nothing. Uh, and that's not surprising. Again, this is exactly like that TVT we played. Filter Starcraft has said if you do this you'll have a three thousand five hundred dollar army at ten minutes which you can use to basically kill anyone in the silver league even without micro and what he said is true but if you try to do it but don't quite and if you wait until 15 minutes it's no longer reasonable right like at, in the first 10 minutes marine marauder medevac tank is unstoppable there's nothing that people can make that will they will beat that composition so flat out that it's a bad composition. But if you wait until 15 minutes in, Charge Lock Colossus does rip that to shreds. So uh, the build was meant to come at 10 minutes when, when he can't have Colossus, when he can't have Charge. And it came so late that he has both of the two things that just kind of make him immune to that. And you'll find the same thing from, from Zerg. Ultralisk Broodlord Infester is going to rip this composition to shreds. But you can't get an Ultralisk until 16 minutes. You can't get a Broodlord until 16 minutes. You can't get an Infester until about 10 minutes. So if you attack before 10 minutes, you're going to be fighting against Roaches and Lings. And as long as you have a, a big enough army relative to his army, you should rip him to shreds. Um, 
So again, this is this is there. There are two styles of play. There's macro play and timing play. Macro play says I'm going to get a bigger income than you. I'm going to pick the right composition, and then throughout the next you know 20 minutes or however long the game takes, I'm going to continuously make a larger army than you all the time. And macro play is much easier than timing play. Timing play says I'm going to have X at 10 minutes, and I'm going to win at that point. So if you miss that benchmark. The, the build doesn't transition into anything, you just lose. If you miss the benchmark, you lose. So I, timing builds are really strong and everyone should know some of them and they're really important to learn and they're really important to do, but it's important to note that timing builds don't go well with, with half acidness and, and, and missing of, of benchmarks. So I'm not surprised that if you haven't won by 10 minutes, you will lose. Any game that you send me where this number is larger than 10 minutes, I'm just going to assume it's a loss because you're doing a timing push. If you don't push at that time, you lose, kind of almost automatically. Um, so the follow-up from, from the 511 should be... Uh, probably just a 5-1-2 with Marines, Marauders, uh, Vikings. So you want two starports because you need to be able to make Medivacs, Vikings, and Banshees, all of them. And that's a lot of air units to make off of one starport, brother. So this, I, I don't expect you to be able to kill this unless he's really stupid. He is kind of stupid, the way he positioned that. And I don't know, maybe your army was enough bigger than his, but... So in this in this fight you have nothing that can that can hit the colossus if he just force fields here here and here actually it only takes two force fields here and here if he force fields here and here moves everyone up to the high ground and then just shoots you with these colossus colossus have nine range and uh the punisher grenade is six range the the freaking marauders have six range unseaged tanks have seven range so nothing you have should be able to hit him if he does this right he should easily have won this fight and he screws it up bro he moves his units into you never move your units into him man don't you know how to play protoss anyway who cares so your goal as a terran uh using infantry against the protoss army you have several goals first if you can put units close to his colossus, his colossus have to stop shooting and move away. So that's a victory. Second, if you can fight him on a ramp where his zealots can't reach you, like right now he's got two zealots that are swinging their swords and the rest of them are just running around doing nothing, that's another win. Uh, and third, if you can get within four or five range of sentries and stalkers, then that's another win. So in this case, he did all of those things for you. He intentionally put himself on a ramp, he intentionally moved his army towards your army and then didn't force field you back, and he intentionally kept his his Colossus really close to the edge. So he just completely screwed himself here. But you did the right thing too. Moving in close like that is the right thing. He shouldn't have let you, that's what I'm saying. But if he does let you, that's perfect, that's great, that's exactly what you should have done. Move right in, into range. I hate that you don't have siege mode yet. Why are you getting siege tanks if you're not going to siege them? Unseaged siege tanks do, I believe, I'll have to look it up. Uh, 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 docs.google.com. D, 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 so they have 5 DPS per dollar, uh, 8.7 if they're shooting at Stalkers, but in most cases they're going to be shooting at Zealots, uh, and 58 health per dollar. If you compare that to a Stim Marine, which has 21 DPS per dollar, 5, it's it's a fourth, like they have 25% the damage of a, of a Marine, and a s if, you, if you have combat shields, I believe this is like 90. Um, so they have half the health and a fourth the damage of a marine. They're like an eighth as good as a marine. They're, they're really terrible. Unsieged tanks are terrible. Uh, and people use unsieged tanks a lot because it's the best choice they have in that situation, but nobody builds tanks intending to use them unsieged uh, unless they're, you know, really good and know what they're doing and are trying to kite with them or something. 
Um, you really want, if you have tanks, you want them to be sieged basically all the time. At this point, I bet your mining efficiency is basically zero. You're not mining at all. I don't know why you're not mining. I guess your main mined out and you moved your guys to your natural or your third, but you didn't tell them to mine. You just put them there. Nobody's over here. Nobody's over here. Here we go. Transfer and dues. Let's start mining again. This is good. Uh, you should always repair this with just one guy, like, because it'll eventually repair, and that's costing you almost nothing to repair it, and it's really important for it to be repaired. You got 200 unit space, and again, this is a passivity problem. Protoss, a uh, 200 unit space Protoss army. Let's wait. Let's wait until he actually gets 200 unit space. Maybe he's not gonna. Maybe he's just gonna sit there with 190 forever. I bet he is. Come on. Get a 200 unit space Protoss army. Um, boom! And he's massing pure charge lot, too. What a crazy guy. Anyway. Boom! Ripping you up! Ripping you up! Ripping you up! And he has nothing that can shoot up, so eventually he's gonna lose all of his Glossus. That's really funny. Make a couple of stalkers, you lazy, lazy man. This is pretty even engagement here. Because... Uh, he's 1-0 one to your 1-1. One, one. He's got charge lots versus your stuff that just dies hardcore to charge lots. But charge lots are like lings. You, they kick ass when you have 10 of them against 10 marines. But they're pretty useless when you have 100 of them against 100 marines or, or 100 marauders or whatever. Because they can't get us around. So when they engage like that, they're, they can't really all hit you. So I loved the positioning of that fight. I don't know if you did that intentionally, but it, when you hide units behind mineral patches, charge lots can't hit them, and that's cool. Um, all that was fine. You really, if you want it, like, your macro is so much better than his. It's, you need to be attacking before you max out. Um... So, like, right now, if you attack him, you've got a $7,000 army against his, uh, four and a half. You'd probably do okay. Unfortunately, you have no Vikings, and you can't really fight until you have two Vikings per Colossus, which is six. You only have three, so maybe you're waiting for more Vikings. But, I guess you're not, because now you're at 200 units base and you don't have any, unit vi any Vikings. Always go to Starport at least when you when you're facing classes and you did you did go to class to starport but you didn't make any vikings out of them you made three um this is a this is a composition understanding problem like if you look you have 34 marauders and only 20 marines charge lots are basically immune to damage from marauders uh and you've got five siege tanks which is good but against a mass charge lot army siege tanks are going to do tons of damage to your own troops and very little to the enemy and then here he comes he's intentionally engaging in the worst possible location look at this he's like i'm gonna sneak around behind him and then attack this is so bad from him all right there we go so he can fit like Uh, seven zealots attacking you, eight zealots attacking you, and he's got 36. So of the 36, only about eight of them get to fight. The rest of them, these guys, they just run around doing nothing. Useless. Useless. Very silly. But you, you were really heavy marauder, really light on Vikings and really light on marines and your tanks I don't know that your tanks did anything but shoot them shoot their own guys Ah, oh, shoot Fa fast forwarding and rewinding too much banshees two force stalkers that is, that is a big big change to this that I would like lots more vikings you want to get like 12 vikings once you if you ever see three colossus you kinda can't do anything against three colossus until you have like six to twelve vikings um, six is what you ideally want against three classes, but when he makes three, you gotta assume he's gonna make four, you gotta assume he's gonna make five, you gotta assume he's gonna make six, so just go straight to twelve, man, just skip it. Straight to twelve. So here we go, you engage with unsieged tanks against zealots, making them the worst unit in the game, completely pointless. Now they're gonna siege up, uh, at this point you've already lost a ton of stuff, oh, you're trying to right click on the colossus, look at your troops, they're not doing anything now. 
They're just like, I'm not gonna shoot. I'm just gonna stand here and die. This is just like the, the, the TVT. You really gotta... You can't learn this by playing game after game after game because you don't know when you're playing the game whether your army was bigger than his or smaller than his, right? So you might have a much smaller army but have the right composition and lose the fight massively and be like, wow, apparently, you know, Viking, Marauder, Medivac, Siege Tank doesn't beat Colossus Charge Lot. I guess I'm making the wrong units. But in reality, you lost because of the positioning and you lost because of the size of the army. Or you might have double his army size and 3-3 three, three upgrades versus 0-0 zero, zero upgrades. And you might crush him with pure Marauder. No Medivacs, no Vikings, nothing. Just completely crush him. And be like, well, I guess what I really needed all along was just more Marauders. But that's not true. Marauders don't beat that composition. You beat that composition because your army was bigger and better upgraded. You know, like, so it's hard to learn the, the unit counters and how to do stuff in the game itself. You don't want to be using the game to learn those matchups. You want to use a vacuum. You want to go in here and give both players the same sized army and have them fight and see who wins, you know? So go into the unit tester again and fight with uh, a bajillion zealots and one colossus uh, with colossus range colossus range extended thermal lamps and one armor and charge and then the Terran gets stim and combat shields and that and that's 500 upgrades for the Terran I believe this is 400 plus 300 is 700 so that's an extra two so we can give Terran plus one, and they have plus one, so we can give them plus one one. That's reasonable. Uh, so now both sides basically have the same army size, right? Protoss has like 75 more, but in a real game, Protoss should have a larger army because they get to warp in. Um, anyway. So then just duke it out, man. Charge in and see what happens. Hey So, is Marine Marauder a reasonable composition against Zealot Colossus with no support, no Guardian Shield, and, you know, blah blah blah. It looks like Marine Marauder is the right composition, okay, you know, interesting. So, in small numbers, on the open field, it seems like Marine Marauder did okay. Especially if you do things like try to stay just out of range of the Colossus and abuse the fact that Charge is going to let them catch up to you before the Colossus catches up to you and stuff like that. Um, or things like uh, abuse the spreader outer ring or try to get in range of the Colossus when the Zealot's whole job is to try to make sure you can't, but see if you can. And then now when it's just dead, this is kind of going to go blah blah blah. Um, you know, <coughs> Charge loss in general beat the crap out of marines and routers you should know that and you can you can't just be told that and assume it because they don't win by triple they win by a certain amount so if you take 10 charge lots against this army they're gonna win but they're gonna win just barely 26 supply against 26 supply same amount of money spent on both sides they're gonna win just barely but uh if you swap out some routers for some marines you can see what happens so now these armies again are the same size. Uh, 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 uh. I'm going to stim them and hold them still and see what happens. Wow, suddenly the Terran wins by a landslide. I guess Marines are extremely important in the, in the charge lot dynamic because Marines actually beat charge lots, whereas Marauders do terribly against charge lots. Um, stuff like that. Uh, so in each matchup, like you can you can remember things like speedlings beat marines, sure. But if you have m fifty marines against uh, sixty speedlings, then suddenly the marines win. So it's you can't just remember charge lots beat marines, charge lots beat marine marauder, charge lot colossus beats marine marauder. You have to kind of get a feel for it yourself. You have to do it over and over and see how it works. And remember, like, when you're playing a game and you remember doing this kind of stuff, then... Eh. Oof. 
then it'll you know come in handy. So in your composition, you were almost pure Marauder, and he was pure Charge Lot Colossus. And I was looking at that, and I was saying, okay, well, you should try this. In my head, I obviously didn't say it out loud, but you you gotta recognize that the Marauders they're not really meant to beat Charge Lots. They're great against Colossus, but the Colossus can he has nine range. He doesn't have to ever go in range of your stupid Marauders. Um. Marauders are terrible, terrible, terrible against Lings, terrible against uh, Charge Lots, and terrible against Marines. They're bad against any non-armored unit. And they're actually pretty bad against armored units. What's good about Marauders is their synergy with Medivacs, and their really quick speed, and their ability to get away, and their concussive shells. They're, they're support units. They're not meant to be the bulk of your army. So when you fight um, against Charge Lot Colossus, do you want a bunch of Marauders? No. This is your answer. No. Um, definitely no. No, 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 no. And do you want a mix of m Marines and Marauders? Uh, it's it's questionable, right? We should we tried a mix before. Um, but it didn't work nearly as well as Pure Marine. Pure Marine worked so much better than than. Uh, marine Marauder, but you got to take into account that with Pure Marine, if he gets Guardian Shield, he's going to rip you to shreds. So especially if he focus fires on the Marines specifically. Ooh, that did that did much better than Pure Marauder, right? Oops. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, Marine. the more Marine heavy you are, the more heavily Terran is going to win this fight. Uh, so pure Marine wins it by the most. Marines with just a tiny bit of Marauders wins it a little bit a little bit less. And in general, pure Marine wins it... Okay, I already said that. Pure Marauder loses it the most, right? Um, but... There's there's another caveat caveat. So in that game he was going just charge lot clauses. He had nothing else. So fine, okay, charge lot clauses wins. But what this is small number battle. What about a big number battle? What about a two hundred unit space fight where he had uh four colossus and a billion charge lots, right? I think he had I don't forget how many he had, but he had a freaking ton of them, right? Let's say twenty five. I think he had more than twenty five. Okay, so say he has thirty. So you're gonna get um Sixty Marines versus thirty charge lots, right? And then how many for the I don't know. Let's just make the money come out even. So this is uh five thousand versus versus five thousand. Uh okay, so you never in a real game you never get to fight in the open field, but pretend you did. What would happen? Again, we know that in small numbers, Marines win this fight. Do they win it in big numbers? With a surround in the open field, they clearly win it in big numbers as well. <laughs> Let's see if we can give Protoss as much of an advantage as we can think of. Do, 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 do. But you want to do this every time you lose a game until you understand all the matchups. Um, you want to go in the unit tester and just get an idea of, okay, well, he made this composition. What beats that composition? And the answer clearly in TVP is that Marines beat <laughs> Charge Lots and Colossus. Now we're going to add uh, the terrain differential and and the force fields, and that's the problem, right? Colossus with Guardian Shield and force fields, it's going to be a very different story, bro. Very different story. So this is now 5,450. So we just add enough marines to get that to 5,450. We're going to change an option so that they actually get energy set to full. 
start. Whoa! Oh, I didn't mean start. Like, what are you doing? Um. So like, respawn, guardian shield, guardian shield, force field, force shield, force shield, force field. If you can't reach my colossus and getting caught in the rain. So even though the Marines still rip the charge lots to shreds, they can't kill Colossus with force fields uh, in a small area. And in in a real game, you're never gonna find an area big enough to get a to get a huge surround at 200 unit space army size. Um, so then you do things like say, okay, well if I can kill the charge lots easily with Marines, but I can't kill the Colossus if he has force fields. What if I try to kill the Sentries really quickly so that they get one force field, then they're dead, and then they can't do anything after that? So let's say, I mean, obviously, you know, you could just say. I win. <laughs> uh, so that's cool. Right? So in reality, in a real game, the Protoss should never be able to get away with having no stalkers. You should be forced to deal with, with, with your air. If he gets to only deal with ground, then you have marines which shoot up and shoot down. So their DPS is specifically cut So that because they have that advantage of being able to shoot up. Charge lots, if we look at uh, Zerglings, right? The Zerglings have this 28 points. Okay, let's look at Zealots. Zealots have a 13.3 DPS per cost, but they have 165 health per cost, whereas a Simmarine only has 70. The Charge lots have more than double the health and about half the, the DPS. So they get kind of an advantage because they have the disadvantage of a lot of times they don't they don't get to fight during the entire engagement and uh, so being melee gives them that disadvantage and also they have the disadvantage that they can't hit air so obviously marines are supposed to have certain advantages and the advantage of being able to shoot up if it's not being used is is kind of ruining things um, and the same thing is true for stalkers right a stalker he can shoot up so of course he's gonna do less ground versus ground damage than somebody who can't like a zealot a stalker is faster he's all he's one of the fastest units out there um, so obviously that speed is gonna come at the cost of some of his uh, battle statistics so if you're not using his speed then it might be beneficial not to have him at all and if you're not using him to shoot up, then it might be beneficial not to have him at all. So in a ground versus ground engagement like the one you were seeing in that game, the Protoss was correctly saying, look, if we're only worrying about ground troops, why would I make stalkers? It's just a waste of my money. Uh, so things like immortals that can't shoot up and that walk really slowly, they get a whole bunch of statistical advantages because they, they, because uh, they can't shoot up and because they walk so slowly. So an immortal is like 9.9 .9 DPS per cost against armored units. Whereas a stalker is only half that, 5.6, and the uh, the with the hardened shell, the immortal actually ends up having more health per dollar than the stalker. But without, if you don't consider hardened shell, that's not true. Anyway, so uh, if you add banshees, he has to add stalkers. If he had add stalkers, marines actually do fine against stalkers, so you don't care. Um, so it's good. Just adding banshees forces stalkers, and you don't need to stop making marines. Um, to deal with force fields, you have to have something that can kill those sentries, which is why we make the tanks in the first place. So, in that game, you had the tanks, and you got to siege them up, and you got to focus fire those guard those sentries, or else you'll be force fielded. In uh, when the terrain itself is limiting how many marines you can squeeze through, and the, the Colossus numbers get more, it's just like against siege tanks. Against two siege tanks, marines will rip them to shreds. If you just stim and run in, you're going to win with those marines. But if you have ten siege tanks, at a certain point, the, the area of effect damage just stacks up so high that no number of marines, not even infinity marines, will ever kill them um, in, in reasonable terrain, right? So, da 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 da, this is 200 unit space of marines against, what, seven colossus? That's not nearly 200 units base of Colossus. But with reasonable terrain, 
And oh, I wonder if this is the right. Yeah, there you go. Oop, nope. I should have moved a tiny bit closer. Because now they're not in the choke; they're out in the open field. So they're actually going to win. Anyway, you get my point. Boop. Oh, that's so cute that they walk with they waddle back and forth like that. They're like weedle waddle, weedle waddle, weedle waddle. There you go. Not even gonna kill a colossus. Oh, I can't click him. Man, I'm so bad at clicking things. Yeah. Uh anyway. You gotta not fight on terrain like that. You gotta fight with smaller fights. You really wanna end the game before he has more than one Colossus. Um, because in small enough Colossus numbers, Marines beat everything Protoss has. Psy Storm and Colossus rip Marines to shreds, but they don't actually beat Marines dollar for dollar if the Marines can get a good spread and a good surround on wide open terrain. But in not wide open terrain, like when they're def the Protoss is defending his natural or when he's defending the ramp to his choke, there's no way to beat him on a choke. You can't walk through a choke and win. It's impossible. And the same thing is true for siege tanks. Uh, so what you got to do is once you get that late into the game, you just can't be pure marine anymore. You have to start adding Vikings to rip these dudes to shreds. And then he's going to start adding uh, Banshees to, I'm uh, not Banshees, um, Stalkers to shoot those Vikings. So you got to start retreating the Vikings behind your Marines. But your Marines only have five range, whereas the Stalkers have six. And the Vikings have seven and the Colossus have nine. So... You start trying to hide behind the Marines. He starts killing the Marines. You have to bring the Vikings up to shoot at the Colossus, but the Colossus have longer range than the Vikings, so he just stays just out of range of that while bringing his Stalkers up. Blah, 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 blah. And to prevent him from doing any of that, you add Siege Tanks and Siege them up and say, look, this white line, you cannot go past it. That's what Siege Tanks are for, so that he can't do this kiting nonsense with, the, with those units. Um, anyway. I don't know. Uh, it just... Whoa. That was crazy. Clear. So it felt like the advice you were taking from the filter video, which I again is good advice, is to have a whole crap ton of marines. And then to attack at 10 minutes when nobody can have anything that counters marines. And to have some medevacs floating around behind them with some siege tanks floating around behind them. And I totally agree with that advice. It's great advice. Marines have no counter on, you know, in the game. As long as you don't get choked by terrain, as long as you don't get guardian shielded and charge lotted and uh, stuff like that. And that's where those tanks come in, prevent them from, from guardian shielding you. Uh, and so all that is great advice. But once you get past the 10 minute mark and all these area of effect units come out, you, you can't be doing that anymore. There's, it's just a completely different game once once uh, the Zerg and the and the Terran and the Protoss are allowed to get their splash units. Um, so yeah, recognize the advice you're taking for what it is. Filter is saying do a timing build. And if you want to do a timing build, it's win or lose by 10 minutes. There is no late game, so stop playing a 50 minute long game with a timing build opening it and saying why didn't this work? It didn't work because you did a timing build and you didn't win during that, that window. Um, I don't know, I hope that helps.